Hi, it's me again with Corel Roll Tips and Tricks, and somebody sent me this ornament. Did a pretty good job, but they were just asking a better way to do it, maybe some suggestions. And I, I came up with one suggestion. I'm gonna vector line uh, that so it shows up more than that. It'll actually show the letters. So let's just make one. I'm gonna take an ellipse. I'm gonna go ahead and make it four inches. My ratio's locked, so it's gonna be perfect. I'm gonna hit P, put it in the center of the page. And then I'm going to take a rectangle. Doesn't really matter what size, and I'm gonna hit P, put it in the center of the page. And I am going to set my nudge factor on like six inches. I want to take the Smart Fill tool, fill that in, Smart Fill tool, fill that in. I'm going to select both those. I'm going to left click, right click. And they're not a group, so I need to group them together, Control G, so the contour tool will work. Go up to Effects, Contour. We're going to contour to the inside 0 0.02. Now we get that shape. Now I'd select it all again, go up to object, break contour apart, and then get rid of the outer ones and have just the inner one. Now I just did a video about random shapes the other day. And this is a, so try to make your box as small as you can, but it will still fit. We're gonna make it a little bit bigger. Because the random shape takes time to make so we're gonna fill that in with black and take away the outline, that doesn't really matter. Go up to effects, creative, stained glass. Make sure this is set on a white or a, a different color. Don't worry about the size, I've got it large already, but we can always change the size. So now you've got this, we need to go to bitmap, convert it to a bitmap, convert to black and white and say okay. Then go to trace, trace, outline trace clip art and what that's going to do is give, give us a good vector uh, file so now we got a good vector file i'm going to left click right click <clears throat> and there's several ways to do this but i found this is the easiest if you wanted now if you wanted bigger areas just stretch this guy out and make it bigger now let's get rid of these and Let's just put it up in there. I might have made it too big. Let's reduce a little bit. Just put it up in there anywhere and intersect. Now we got that. But one of the problems is, especially in working with this, we're going to want, we don't want this line and to stop the, the smart field from getting in there. So the easiest way I've found is to take the Smart Fill tool and just fill that in and nudge it over. Fill in every spot. And what that's doing is creating a, and you know, if you were to reposition it a little bit, you wouldn't maybe have these little bitty things. Um, you know, you could look at that before you do it. And then just take the other side. Now there's a way to probably break that apart but I found this is just as easy. And we'll go ahead and fill in that little bitty gap. That's one I would back up and probably read adjust. But now, let's select that and let's left click, right click. Whoop, we don't want to do that. We want to, because we don't want the outline. We want, see when we, yeah, you know, that's, that's what we want. I was confused. I was thinking that was, see now the Smart Fill tool, when you fill it in to make it look like wood, it'll, it'll get into those joints. So you need to do the same thing for the bottom. We're almost done. Just grab all those and left click, no fill. Right click, I'm gonna go and do them in black. It doesn't matter, just so they'll show up. Now we didn't need to do the, in, the interior name. And our walls are actually a little bit too thick, so let's take this and just nudge it up a little bit and then hit P. That's what's nice about the, the center of the page. Let's, let's go ahead and delete this. And let's make this shape, so we're gonna take the Smart Fill tool and fill that in. Go ahead and nudge it out of the way. Now we can take away our rectangle. We want that curvature of the outside. 
I'm going to left click, right click that. We've still got the contour open, but let's just contour to 0.1 to the inside. Just get a little bit, maybe a little bit more. Let's back up here. Let's go ahead and do two, like the other walls. Nah, that's too little. Let's, let's go uh, 0.15, split the difference. Now, go up to object, break the contour apart, and move this over. So now we have, and I would actually start off with a bigger box. So you could do this, you could stretch it a little bit, and then hit P, and you have about the same gap. Uh, you could actually bring this in a little bit and hit P. Now let's get rid of all this stuff so it won't get in our way. We're going to take the word dad and just duplicate this, have the cap, uh, all caps on, bring it in here. And you want a pretty thick font. So we're just going to pick Arial and, and make it bold. And then just bring it in there. Let's left click, right click. And this is where it becomes pretty cool uh, that I think. Well, let's hit P, put it in the center of the page. That's pretty good. Uh, we want a little bit bigger dad. So let's just stretch it a little bit and then hit P. Now here's what's kind of the key. Hit the plus key on your keyboard and move that over. Now on this one, take your virtual segment delete key and delete let me zoom in here. Let's delete these lines. Okay, it's a font. It's a text, so you have to go to object and convert it to a curve for the virtual segment delete key to work. So all I'm doing is deleting this lines. Now, This would actually work right now. You know, if we take our smart fill tool on a brown, let's do a lighter brown than I did earlier. That's what the ornament's gonna look like. But let's add a little zing to it. By doing that, we're gonna do just the opposite here. And what we could possibly do is select that rectangle and our dad, make sure you get it all. Go back minus front. We want the opposite, front minus back. We want just that. <clears throat> now take your, zoom in a little bit, take your shape tool and select all your shapes, right click with your mouse and break it apart. Then take these inner lines and virtually segment delete the line. That's gonna be a cut line. Now there's two ways you could do this. I would run it twice in vector this black line. We're gonna make them black now. You could vector them, be a lot quicker, double click on your pen tool, make them black, and then nudge them over. And that's what it's gonna look like. Now, so you could either vector it, let's do this, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. And let's say we're gonna put it in the laser. I'm gonna go in I'm gonna go ahead and group all this together, control G, and then I can take this and move this over twice, put it up in your laser, and this is what I would do. I would take that shape and nudge it out of the way. And I would run, these are hairlines, so they're gonna cut, but I'd run it like at 100 power and. 50 speed so it can't cut through. And then nudge them out of the way. Take this and put it right back to exactly where the other one was and cut this out. And then it's gonna look like this. That's gonna be cut out, but you're gonna have vector lines. We'll probably have to put them on top of the page, in front of the page because they're not showing up. Go to object, order, front of page. And then that's what it's gonna look like. So you could either do that, or you could take these lines and make them something other than a hairline, something two points. Let's see what it, 
eight points, and you could run it as a combination job and actually engrave this. Of course, this is gonna take a little time where if you vector engraved it with a hairline, I guarantee within two seconds this is done. You know, something four inches is probably, because it's gotta do all this and go up there, probably take a minute and then to cut it out. And the vector line I think looks pretty cool because it's, it's a deep cut line. Anyway, I hope that helped a little bit. Thank you for watching.